Welcome back to another edition of the Around the Block podcast from Coinbase. I'm Justin Mart. And I'm Catherine Wu. Catherine, who are we talking to this week? So this week we're bringing on Alexis Ohanian um, to talk about communities in Web3. Um, so I just want to give a quick background intro on Alexis. I think a lot of us know who he is already, but for our listeners, um, Alexis is the former executive chair of Reddit and current founder of uh, this VC firm called 776. Um, he has been super loud in his support for the growth of Web3. Also, I'm super excited because, you know, again, as a founder of Reddit, I feel like he has so many good lessons to bring in from his early days of building it and seeing the ways that community has really evolved over the years. So hopefully in this conversation, we'll get to the heart of what Web3 means to Alexis, why he's excited about it, and how it ultimately goes mainstream. Yeah, how fitting is it that we're talking about Web3 on our first remote edition? <laughs> we're not in person this time around, but you know what? It's the new realm. It's what we're doing in 2022 anyway. And uh, Web3 is the, the topic du jour. And who better to talk to than Alexis, who uh, has so much experience with Web2 and now Web3 as well. Awesome. Let's get it started. Got like a whole proper setup, but this is this is the road kit. So hopefully it'll do. I think we're all just halfway winging this here. I mean, it's kind of our our first yeah. go at the remote thing too. It's not my proper setup either. Okay. But, uh, you know, none of that matters, right? Because we're in a remote world. So we got to yeah. use these things. It's true. Um, maybe a little bit, actually, of just kind of the first thing I wanted to jump into. Um, mm -hmm. First off, super excited to chat with you. I mean, I'm a huge Reddit fan as well. I think I've got one of those 10-year, 11-year badges. Um, Dope. Early oh. adopter. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but super exciting to just be talking to somebody who has so much experience in Web 2 and now so passionate and excited about Web 3. Crypto um, build. Exactly, crypto code. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I do feel like it's really helpful just to take a pause and define what we're talking about. Web three is mm -hmm. a pretty big buzzword these days, so I want to get your definition of Web three. What is it we're talking sure. about? How is it different? When I think of Web three, I think about the transition from an internet that is just read and write, which we know well as Web two, to one that is read, write, and own. And ownership is a subtle distinction, but it's a really big one. Um, before it was. What was it? The pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. It was life, liberty, and property. I think that was John Locke. And and they they remixed it so it was a little bit more palatable. But you know, property rights are a pretty important sort of founding ideal to democracy like the United States. And I think the reason for that is property rights are a pretty important ideal for our species. Uh, whether we were just painting things on our walls or we were collecting beautiful seashells. Um, I think our species is just really all about that property ownership life, for better or for worse. Uh, and so this is a really fundamental thing because so much of our life is now happening online. And this is taking one of the last parts of something that is core to our species and, and truly letting it thrive online. So how's that for a heady answer for what I think Web3 is? The ownership yeah, I mean, matters. It, it matters a lot. I, I think I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm crypto pill too. So I kind of like drink all the Kool-Aid as well. Um, but I always get a little bit hung up too and just thinking about some of the practical differences between Web2 apps and Web3 apps and what exactly will change when we talk about ownership. What is the ownership we're talking about? Um, maybe just to clarify things in my head a little bit. I think about on two dimensions. I think number one, it's this kind of idea that you know, this very popular idea that, hey, your data on Web2 platforms is not yours. You know, if you're on a centralized platform, they control your data, they control your involvement, they control all aspects of how you interact with that platform. Web3 says, oh, you can own it in the sense that you own your data, you could take it with you, you're not beholden to these platforms. That to me is one sense of data or one sense of ownership. The other sense of ownership could be you actually have some measure of ownership in the platform itself. Like you experience the upside as the platform grows. So I'm wondering, you know, that's at least my framing on it, but uh, do you see it the same way or is it a little bit different? So yes and you. I think the first is certainly important and we're seeing, we're already seeing that play out. The, look, I'm not a, I, I'm definitely not a so hardcore crypto pilled that I have total distrust for any institution. I, look, that meme is strong right now. Institutions have done spectacularly poorly over the last decade. And I think I have a whole nother thing about why digital natives are so uniquely primed for this. It was the reason why all the news networks wanted me on 
uh, last January to talk about GameStop and meme stocks because they didn't understand this phenomenon and want to understand it. It's, it's all the same sort of current. And, and yet all kind of all roads do lead back to Reddit. I do think, look, people ultimately care most about delightful user experiences. For some people, a delightful user experience is knowing that you actually own your data. For a lot of people, it doesn't actually matter. It doesn't matter. They don't care. They just want a better user experience that's just more fun or just whatever the definition yeah. is. And so, you know, I think about that too as an investor. Look, the reason I was lucky enough to be one of the earliest investors in Coinbase was because the user experience in 2012 of buying Bitcoin was terrible. It was shady. It was weird. It was full of hurdles. And did, did you wire your money to Mt. Gox too? Or no, <laughs> so shady. no. Okay, good, Despite good you, yeah. seeing, you know, r slash Bitcoin, you know, there was a, a thriving community there on Reddit, which was the reason why I believed there could be a chance that this would work. Because I just looked at it and said, okay, if this many Redditors care this much and are trying this hard and it's this much of a pain in the ass and they're still doing it, if someone comes along and builds a better user experience for buying crypto with fiat, it should win. It'll at least win for this initial audience. It'll probably win for more. I thought, realistically, and you could hear me on Rogan in 2014 saying, like, I'm cautiously optimistic about Bitcoin and Coinbase because, you know, it had actually, I think it was the day after I did Rogan, it hit like 400. It, had, it you know, Bitcoin was having a tough time. And I still was nervous <laughs> that it wouldn't hold up, it wouldn't sustain, the government would shut it down, et cetera, et cetera. And then, Really in the last year and a half, basically during COVID, I just realized, no, we've made it. We've, we've crossed the point of no return and it's just has too much utility to too many people. And so to go back to your original question though, I think the part that stirs my cocoa is, you know, for 16 years, I, well, okay. 16 years ago, I invented a point system on Reddit that for almost two decades convinced a lot of people to spend a lot of time uh, doing really important work. You know, submitting content. Karma was just a very basic idea, stole the name from Slashdot, created these up and down arrows and said, if you submit a link, there were no comments at first, submit a link if people like it, they'll click up vote, you'll get one point. They click down, <laughs> you lose that one point. That's your karma score. And there was a leaderboard. And for the first year, the leaderboards were the number one thing that drove people to take their valuable time and spend it submitting links to strangers on the internet. Same I built the same similar, same model for the commenting system, sorting, all that stuff. And again, 2005, no Twitter, Facebook still in colleges. Most people I talked to said, there's no way in hell the average person is going to spend five, six, seven hours a day posting content or consuming content for and by strangers on the internet. That was, it was very contrarian to say that internet points would suffice. And frankly, I just leaned on the fact that I grew up playing video games where made up points were always enough of an incentive, whether you wanted bragging rights at the arcade or whether you just wanted to feel good uh, about your high score, just with yourself. <laughs> and, and then the awards, you mentioned your 10 or 11 or 12 year badge, right? That I created simply because of GoldenEye on the N64. This was the first multi, really multiplayer console game that like hooked my friends and I, and we didn't have to bring our computers over to everyone's house to play a LAN, uh, LAN match, you know, probably Quake 2 back then or whatever it was. Um, we could just plug in our controllers and play. And even the guys who lost still had an award at the end of a GoldenEye match. It was usually like most cowardly or some of these other weird ones that were based on a weird data point. Like you spent the least amount of time on every other player's screen. That was most cowardly. And so I was like, great, we're going to create, like I'm going to design awards for Reddit based on these daily things that can just happen. So everyone feels like they get a participation trophy of some sort based on some principle or thing we want to reinforce in their behavior. And I never would have predicted that the yearly one would be as compelling as it was. But I go to events now where people introduce themselves to me, not as their government name, not as their Reddit username, but they just say, I'm a 12 year Redditor. I'm a 15 year Redditor, right? Exactly. Just I like just you did, did at the start yeah. of the show. <laughs> yeah, that's literally and, what I just did. And it, it's, it's, to me, I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> why, why is that important? Because it is, even though it's in a centralized database, for a community of hundreds of millions of people, it has meaning because it's proof of, of being early and right, essentially, and having status in the community. Even though you may not have ever submitted a post, you may not have gotten a single karma point, you were still early and right. So when a buddy of mine was like, hey, you should take a look at these crypto punks. They're among the earliest of a really interesting uh, 
uh, Ethereum project, I was like, no, come on. Like, dude, I've got a dozen crypto kitties <laughs> that I minted when that first rolled out. It was a terrible user experience. There was no point, like there was no game, no, no, no offense, Dapper, y'all have done a great job. But like the, the V1 of it, look, I, I was, I guess I was smart enough to have at least tried it, but dismissive enough and, and blind enough to think like, this isn't engaging. Like, I don't want to come back. There's not enough there, there. But as I started spending time in these communities and then by early 2020, as some of these art sales are picking up, I'm like, okay, all right, this is interesting. And, and then it was really at the apes. Um, you know, I didn't mint any, but I got some, I think in May or June and yeah. I saw this community and I was like, oh, 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 this is Reddit, except you actually get value from being early and right. And it's not limited to one platform. It's the entire internet. And there are cultures being created using the, the best available means, which are discord and Twitter to create this culture, but it's imbuing the same. I mean, it's the same vibes. It's the same feels. And, and what that unlocked for me was just something unshakable now, which is you can reward people for being early and right. And they actually own those things. They invest either their time or their money into. And I, it can seem very silly, but I'm seeing these trends collide collectibles you know, that they're rooted in nostalgia, right? I'm wearing a Marvel cap. Like I've collected comics and trading cards and all this stuff since I was a it's kid. It's part of your personality too, right? It's part of who you are. It's a tribe. Yeah. And, and just being able to tell someone like, oh, you played GoldenEye. Like you have these moments because we, all of that culture was forged <laughs> in, in um, maybe moments of community, but generally because it was pre, you know, modern internet, you felt pretty alone doing it. You had your small little groups all having these individual shared experiences that now you get to rekindle with folks. And so you have the receipts. And this is a long winded way of saying, so the very first way Reddit made money was two months into the site, I wanted to make merch. And this was the biggest fight that Steve and I had had <laughs> in building the site so far. And I said, no, 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 like I have to do this. Like, you know, CEO got the final say. So I was like, I'm I'm doing it. I'm getting 500 shirts, put a little Reddit logo on it. And we're going to sell them on the website again before Shopify, before Stripe. <laughs> this was like a, I had to hack together a website with like PayPal buttons, a janky little storefront, three colors. We sold out in 24 hours. And I went down to the post office feeling really good about myself with all these. And I stuffed every one of them myself, sent them out 500 of these damn Reddit shirts. Now today, if you have one of those, it's probably a collector's item. I don't know. You can get it graded and who knows what it'll be worth. But like, what were those people doing? Those people were deciding, you know, here's this brand new thing I never heard of. Here's this logo, this art I kind of like. I'm going to wear it on my torso. This is the most valuable real estate we have in the physical world. And, and because of a sense of community from the online world that they could then bring offline. Well, look, it's 2021. We spend more of our lives, pandemic or not, online than we do offline. So what's the what's t-shirt the we wear? What's the identity we wear? It's our profile pic. Profile pics, in hindsight, were such an obvious gateway because they became such an afterthought for all of us as we were creating our products in Web2. I mean, it didn't matter, right? Like the last thing you thought about was, oh, yeah, make sure you can let people upload their profile photo. Do we need to think any more about that? No, it's a solved problem. Just let people upload their damn profile photo, right? From, from your Xbox to your PlayStation to your Netflix account needs a profile photo. There's no reason to have that as a form of identity other than to just more quickly identify which is my account and which one's my wife's account. But we still have it. It's now so ubiquitous. And, yeah. and so in hindsight, I'm like, well, fuck, this thing was staring at me the whole time. I'm glad I figured out when I did. But this is the gateway into giving people a sense of identity that actually belongs to them. And just like that t-shirt, like it's in their closet and they can put it on when they want to. And it's the same thing, except now <laughs> the resale properties of it are benefit from being digital first. And that's a big deal. It's a really big deal. So <clears throat> first of all, like great, great. Like I appreciate the rant. I really like it because I'm also kind of a ranter. Um, but like, I love the idea that like uh, people have just been forming like from all corners of the web, right? Since the internet has has been around, like uh, meeting just, I don't know, like honestly a stranger to me is just text, right? Like you're reading each other's words and then you're like forming a community, how, however magic that is. And then now we're living in, you know, like we're, uh, Justin and I at least, like we're full time we spend in the web three crypto world, right? And every like, and I think at this point, like every new uh, company or founder understands that like, 
um, your your most important buy-in is your community. And yes. but at this point, like it's a bit like thrown around. It's like everything is a uh, community, and like w- and I feel like it's one of those words that people say that that kind of loses its meaning. Like aside from just interest gathering, like that could be a community, but like what else, right? Like technically, if we're all early on Bitcoin, we're part of the Bitcoin community. We hold Ethereum, we're part of the Ethereum community, and like how does that really change along with your sense of identity? How many identities we can have, and how do we all reconcile it back to the gigantic like community in like all caps yeah look i y'all have heard me ranting about minimum viable community i think it's i took it for granted you know reddit was not the first i mean we were inspired in many ways by slash dot which was its own community even our arch rival dig was its own community and i was just talking to kevin on modern finance or what is his podcast about this because we had we were arch rival ceos for years and i kept waiting for dig to launch create your own dig but they had a ceiling on how big their community could get because the things that were popular on the front page of dig couldn't be like popular for everyone if you had just one front page you're letting one community ultimately dictate what is the news of the day what's the conversation of the day and that was always going to stifle their growth because as big as the community of like tech fan early adopters was that there'd always be a ceiling. Like there's just going to be people for whom they're going to look at that front page every day and be like, no, it's not for me. I'm going to find something else. And letting users create their own communities was the way that we knew Reddit was going to scale. But again, that's the, now this infrastructure exists for the entire internet and community is driving everything. Is it absolutely cliche now? Yes. I still feel very validated because I swear for years it was people were very dismissive of the idea that people could bond, that people could care. I remember a pretty well-known VC. I remember pitching a pretty well-known VC who asked me his notorious, like, what is it about the world that you understand that no one else does question? And this is like 10 years ago. And I said, this, and this is the context of Reddit, but because I didn't expect all this Web3 stuff, but that people would care more about their pseudonym on Reddit than their government name. And they would care more about that identity than the one on their driver's license because they were being their truest, realest self there. Because being pseudonymous, they could be whoever they wanted to be. They could be, they could spend six hours a day in the Bitcoin community and six hours a day, running out of hours in the day, in the Pokemon <laughs> community. And those two senses of identity would never have to collide. Like humans, we're pretty good at that, actually. Um, you know, you could you could just dive from one conversation to another, still be the same person. Um, and and still have this sort of totally crafted self based on the communities you really belong to. There's a real thing happening there. And that's where relationships really form or they really start. That's where life happens, right? But I do have to ask the question. Um, Part of me wonders if bringing financial matters, basically financializing communities, which is kind of what's happening today in Web3 too. I have the tokens and NFTs and they're worth so much money, right? So we're bringing a financial element to it. I also wonder if that's subverting some of the value. Are we ruining it by introducing money into things that should be organic and should be just really authentic? The immune system still has to clear that out and it's gonna take a minute for sure because there's a bunch of new people coming on and the incentives of making money and all that stuff is bad. But the the thread line that's gonna keep persevering is for the quality stuff, it's gonna continue to endure and it's gonna continue to reward the people who were early and right. And so I, I see that as a positive and I, I know this industry and all of its early adopters still overwhelmingly look like me, but I am hopeful that if this thing can really be as disruptive as everyone hopes it can, that it can finally start to upend a lot of those traditional institutions and systems that have have not properly rewarded being early and right. I think one of the things I worry a little bit about, which is that like in overthinking incentive designs were... Um, we're not thinking enough about being inclusive, right? So like, I think about that, I think about why we have problems in Web3 today with people who just like know how to like game the system really because, you know, maybe they've been around like designing incentives and they know how to game it. And like, there are a lot of newcomers who wanna be included, but like, can't tell like what are, you know, uh, projects that are really trying, what are the projects that are, you know, engaging in lazy thinking. Um, and so, you know, not that we like can find a solution today, but um, I guess uh, like uh, turn it to you kind of what are some of the um, maybe best practices in even sussing out like whether or not a community is something you want to be part of? Like, how can you like when does your spidey sense go off? Like, OK, this is 
there's something here. Like this is, like you say, right, minimally viable. This is, um, it's going to be very unsatisfying because I think it's very qualitative right now. I mean, I literally invested in a company called Comsor simply because I wanted a kind of sales force for community management across platforms. Like I want more data driven thinking around what is a healthy community. It took us, it took us years to build uh, essentially a metric for, for that within subreddits so that we could see as communities were attending, trending towards toxicity, where we could engage with community managers to actually help turn it around or even understanding like, what does it take? Like literally how many posts per day is required for a community to just be thriving on the platform. So that's like the kind of mindset that I'm approaching this with. I, I don't have a good answer for that yet because <laughs> these communities, you know, if we just look at NFT projects, you know, they, they, they tend to live mostly between discord and Twitter. Um, they're still a lot to figure out in terms of like how to define quality engagement, but like, let's go anecdotally, you know, I'm looking for folks who are putting intention and effort, like actually just literally spending time. This is almost like, I don't know, is an anthropologist who embeds themselves in a society and just kind of chills and watches. Like it's almost anthropological work. You're spending time in the discord. You're spending time following the hashtag. You're just looking, you're just watching. And I think in particular folks with higher EQ will, will find even more success here because they have a kind of, I don't know, just a better emotional intelligence when it comes to seeing like our real bonds being formed, our people like, yes, there's, there's in jokes, there's memes, there's culture, but like, what are the stories people are telling to one another? What are the stories about, you know, what, what this project means for them? What are they doing? Are they creating their own, right? I guess it depends on licensing issues. Are they creating their own versions to wear on their chests? Are they getting tattoos? Are they doing the things that show a stronger sense of, of tribalism and identity and sort of the best ways of it? And also like, is the team behind it really building something? I being an early stage investor, this feels again like a bit of an unfair advantage because I'm I'm looking for a lot of the same characteristics one would look for in an early stage company where they don't have a product yet or it's a you know basic one. Um, you're really betting on the team and the vision and the roadmap and if they're capable of executing on it. And I do think, look, fun thing, uh, the the. The muscles that one needs to do investing, especially early stage investing, are going to be exercised by a whole ton of people now. Like I joke, but I'm kind of serious that everyone is a VC now mm -hmm. and certainly everyone in crypto. And I, I think that trend will continue. Uh, and, and then one little bit of optimism, you know, in spite of the fact that, and I, I, you know, I didn't do enough to fix this, but in spite of the fact that Reddit is still uh, quite a male dominated platform, women over number is that the right word there's a there's they, they punch above it there's far more women moderators versus men so these are the people who do the volunteer work on reddit of community building and management and like think about that on on reddit <laughs> women are way more active on the moderating side and that to me is such a strong indication of why it is in everyone's selfish best interest to at a minimum get more women into web three and into these companies as early as possible because like i'm i'm speaking now <laughs> totally just from from personal belief i don't have any evidence behind this but i just really think women are much better equipped to do community management and community building than men I, like i like if you want to win and you know community is core to what you're doing you're going to need a lot of women to help you get there I actually was going to say, like you kind of mentioned earlier, which is that like, if you want to make products that are inclusive, you just got to design it to be inclusive, like stop making these like, and I, like I harp on this so many times, like crypto is so intimidating because there are so many barriers. It's barriers are on education. It's barrier because of capital and entry. Like it's barrier because yeah, I mean, the education thing is just huge. You know, I can't like, I un honestly cannot harp on this enough. Like if you want to make products for people to use, it just needs to be intuitive. It needs to like not, I don't need to like Google 10 terms just to like download like a wallet. Like it just needs to be, like you said, Alexis, delightful, right? It needs to be a download. I can use it. Like why do people love Apple so much? Cause you literally don't need an instruction manual, right? Like you just open it and you just know, right? Like, I mean, you know, you see uh, children, like they know like, oh, my hands go here and it opens like, duh. And like crypto needs to get to that like touch screen, like duh, like, um, I don't know. Like I was watching like Steve Jobs when he like 
uh, presented the iPhone the first time and people in the audience like well, they were they were like like oh you could just see an audible gasp like I need crypto to get there thank so. you because I don't think look I don't think I did a great job of it with Reddit and I think the reason why women sort of dominate the moderator community is an accident and I think it, it has more to do with the fact that I think this is an advantage I think it's an advantage that women have I think a lot of what uh if we talk about traditional gender roles I think one of the things that ends up like being something that like most women are put in that position of doing the community building of doing that kind of work and you could argue what percent is innate what percent is learned whatever at the end of the day that to me is such a tell that there is there's opportunity being left on the table every day in crypto because there's a ton of talent that's not being fully utilized in in these spaces and uh the folks who do it are gonna gonna run away with it so five years ten years whatever your timeline is if you believe that web3 uh, let's and let's just say just say nfts one one specific technology within this um and let's just say collectible nfts just the idea of like oh it's a membership or it's a cool thing it's a collectible let's say we believe that those are going to be uh, ubiquitous and the user experience is finally going to be delightful, Catherine, and everyone's going to have an equal shot at picking it up and getting into it. Women, women uh, create more content on social media. They consume more content on social media. They drive uh, consumption. Like the trends <laughs> are, are all leading towards women ultimately running the show when it comes to driving these cultural trends, like, like think of the mainstream cultural trends. And, uh, and so I, like, I think it's not a question of if it's just a question of when. Amen to that. And so like, it's in your selfish best interest if you're listening <laughs> to be doing this, because if you agree that this is ubiquitous, then you're, <laughs> we are building a web three. That's going to actually be just like web two is now largely dominated and moved by women. That, that part yeah. of the market's actually gonna do the, do the heavy lifting. I'm just curious, what type of communities in Web3 are exciting to you today? Um, you know, you talked about PFPs, but what about music, sports, you know? Um, what is it, gaming? Yeah, gaming, okay, gaming is, I think this is gonna be a big year. Well, this will definitely be a big year for music NFTs. That one's on the cusp, and we're already seeing stuff popping off and, and feels pretty straightforward. Um, and it's ripe, given how, you know, streaming, look, streaming royalties have gotten a lot better. And I, I know this weirdly because I, I, I'm actually a backer of a couple of artists via this, this platform called Indify. And, and so streaming rights have gotten better, but they're still ridiculously low given the value. And, uh, and so I think, yeah, okay, Web3 solves this. We're going to see some change there. Gaming, look, gaming is another one that I just, I can't unsee having grown up, played EverQuest and World of Warcraft and uh led an investment in a company called skyweaver uh well a game called skyweaver a company called horizon it's about three years ago and i wrote a blog post called where players own their own loot you know i was talking about the power of nfts in gaming and okay three years later now it looks like it's coming to fruition but three years ago i get people replying to me being like the hell is this this is no way and i'm like you don't understand like <laughs> we've been doing this on eBay on the down low for two decades now. <laughs> and, and if you just make the user experience better, it's gonna rip. And I even said some stuff recently where I was like the vast majority of, of gamers in five years are just not gonna play games that don't value their time, either by letting them own the stuff they buy or rewarding them for the time they spend. And it caught some heat and I had some, some you know, triple A game developers telling me that I'm full of shit. Um, but I, like I said, I just can't unsee it. Again, it comes back to user experience. Would I rather spend $10 on a JPEG of a cool Spider-Man skin that I own, <laughs> that I could hang on to and flip later? Because look, I can go on eBay right now and buy some Fortnite accounts to get access to those limited run skins. You can go do it right now. It's against the terms of service. It's a pain in the ass user experience, but you can do it. People still do it. They were doing it for UO items, Ultima Online. They were doing it for World of Warcraft Gold. They're doing it for EverQuest accounts. It's been around for a minute. Make the user experience better, people are gonna do it. I do think with all the talent now moving to Web3 Gaming, I mean, it's gonna be a bloodbath the next couple of years because it's still hard to make a very good game. And there's gonna be a ton of people now building on top of this. So I'm most excited about those communities. Um, again, we're running into the same weird dilemma because again, if you look at gaming today, gaming is, 
is women dominated because when you bring in mobile casual games look at the numbers more women playing games for more time than men again like <laughs> if i'm looking at the low-hanging fruit of of gaming i'm not looking at the triple a like Fortnite competitor i'm looking at the candy crush i'm going for the low-hanging fruit for the games that make billions of dollars selling people you know digital hammers that are pointless and then harvesting their time for advertisements like that's it that's low-hanging fruit and again who's playing those games women so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited I, I think some really interesting gaming communities are going to emerge um and uh and music's a great one too but like gosh we're still this is it we're still a little early this is like because here's the here's the fun part we're at the part of web3 where i don't know in the mid 90s i was building my first websites on geocities and i'm thinking oh this is so cool i can build a website that anyone in the world can see but nowhere in my brain was reddit nowhere in my brain was any of the stuff youtube any of the world changing tech that was actually to come and we're at the stage we're at the stage where it's like oh cool i've got a pfp that looks like an ape other people have one like it too mm -hmm. we own it that's dope but but our imagination is still so restrained for what this technology can do and so even when we do the things that we know need to get changed music gaming etc there is a much larger area to run which are the things that smarter people certainly than me are are going to be in the middle of the night unable to go to sleep because they need to build it i didn't mean to suggest that it had to be easy for more people to get onboarded you just have to make like it desirable enough because i remember i just had a flashback sitting here when i was 12 years old and I had a zanga page and i was like learning like html because i was like i need my cursor to be like a pink cat and like that was like so desirable to me that i was like copy pasting i don't even know what code i was copy pasting but it was like experimenting and making it work well thank you for making me feel old and you're absolutely right because y'all the next generation actually found i mean it's it's that gateway drug was for the reward of personalization and a flex or i don't know whatever the motivations were but like I don't know, maybe this is a company that we just need to fund because we've got a pretty cool community, like a 776 community of folks on social media who are excited about what we're working on. And I want, I need a funnel uh, that's as broad as possible to get people onboarded and crypto pilled. And again, I'm a capitalist here. I'm doing this because I know this is going to help all of it be far, far, far more successful at the end of the day. Yes, it does achieve some of the social things I want to see in the world. But more importantly, this is going to help better things come to fruition that we'll all be grateful for. And uh, just glad, glad y'all could bring me on and hear me rant <laughs> about this stuff. Well, this is a great time, I think, to end our conversation today, even though I know we could be talking like all day about this. For a long time. I, <laughs> I know, I, I can't shut up. I got a whole nother page of questions, man. So <laughs> maybe another time. I love just the learnings that we get from somebody who's been around in Web2 and has now red pilled themselves into Web3 and gives us a glimpse into how they're thinking about Web3 is really just, you know, Catherine, you mentioned this, but all about community, all about the user experience, all about how communities are changing and different in this new Web3 web realm. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, but it's also like so fundamentally so human, you know, like you and I were even talking earlier today, like, um, like we're both actually like Reddit users and like I would think community and like wanting to find a sense of belonging and the things you care about, and the things you find interesting is like so core to human nature. Um, and that shouldn't change necessarily with like, uh, web two or versus web three, but just more of like how we think about our relationship with the community that's, that we build. Thanks everyone for listening. As usual, you can find us on YouTube, on Spotify, and honestly, wherever else you get your podcast. And don't forget, we also have a website. It's uh, coinbase.com slash around the block, and you'll find long form research uh, from our team um, and find any other updates on uh, the page as well. And catch us next week for more. Today's conversation is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal or investment advice. Actual results may vary materially from any forward-looking statements made and are subject to risks and uncertainties. Thank you.